Hello, my name is Nolene Fallon. I'm a clinical nurse specialist in the cardiac rehab department in Tally University Hospital. And this presentation is on medications for cardiovascular disease. I'd like to introduce you to some resources. The HSE website has a guide for patients on commonly used medications. The link is here. You can paste this into your browser and have a look through this document. The Irish Heart Foundation have a book called Step by Step Through Heart Medications. This is a very comprehensive book with a lot of information about the various cardiac medications. The link here is to the Irish Heart Foundation website where you'll find a lot more information. Important things to know about your medications. It's important to know the name of the medication and the dose, as in how many milligrams. It's important to know what you're taking your medication for and when you take your medication. Do you take it in the morning or do you take it at night? Do you take it twice a day? Do you take it once a day? It's important to keep a medication list and take note of any allergies and to bring the medication list with you to the hospital for each visit. In order to renew your prescription with your GP, you may have to do this in advance by one week. If you forget to take your medication, only take it if you remember it on the same day. Please don't double dose on the next day. It's important not to stop taking prescribed medication without first talking to your doctor or pharmacist as to why you want to stop taking it. Perhaps you're having some effects, additional effects or side effects from the medication. Be aware that there are additional effects or side effects, like I've said, for, from medication in the body. And we will discuss these in relation to each of the cardiac medications discussed in this presentation. The common medications for cardiac patients include aspirin, antiplatelet agents, beta blocker, ACE inhibitor, cholesterol lowering, and nitrates. Other medications include calcium channel blockers, anticoagulants, such as warfarin or the newer oral anticoagulants. These are generally known as blood thinners and diuretics, which are known as water tablets as they extract water from the body. The antiplatelet medication, these are commonly prescribed for patients after a cardiac event and or the insertion of a stent. Antiplatelets stop cells in the blood, which are called platelets, from sticking or clumping together and forming a clot. And again, we call these blood thinners. Common antiplatelet medications include aspirin, clopidogrel, titagrelor, and prosugrel. Of note, titagrelor must be taken twice a day, and cardiac patients are often prescribed aspirin and one of the other medications listed here. Potential side effects include stomach upset, breathing difficulties, bruising is very common, skin rashes, diarrhea, dizziness. And we do ask that you ask the pharmacist for advice regarding pain or cold remedies. Pantoprazole is a medication that is used to protect your stomach when you are taking two antiplatelet medications, such as aspirin and clopidogrel, or aspirin and tagrelor, for example. Beta blockers slow the heart rate. This reduces the workload of the heart and it makes it easier for the heart to pump the blood around the body. Beta blockers are used for chest pain, which we call angina, and are also used after a heart attack. Beta blockers are sometimes used to control fast or irregular heart rhythms. And the most common uh, irregular heart rhythm is known as atrial fibrillation. And I will discuss this later on in one of the slides. The most common beta blocker prescribed is called bisoprolol. And potential side effects include tiredness, cold hands and feet, vivid dreams and impotence. 
ACE inhibitors or angiotensin receptor blockers are two medications of, we'd say, a similar family. ACE inhibitors are prescribed and used for high blood pressure and help the heart muscle to pump more efficiently. Examples include ramipril and perindipril. The potential side effect of ACE inhibitors is a dry cough. If this occurs, the ACE inhibitors are usually discontinued and the angiotensin receptor blocker is prescribed in its stead. And common examples include losartan, falsartan, and telmisartan. These act in the same way as the ACE inhibitors, but do not cause a dry cough. Lipid lowering medication is used to lower cholesterol. It's for long-term use, and a statin is commonly prescribed. Examples include rubastatin and atorvastatin. Isetamide is another medication which lowers uh, lipid levels in the blood, but it acts directly in the gut. It can be used in combination with statins or can be used on its own. Potential side effects of statins include muscle aches and pains, stomach upset and flatulence. Calcium channel blocker. These medications are used for angina, they're also used for high blood pressure, and they act by widening or opening or dilating the blood vessels. Common examples include amlodipine, nifedipine, and diltiazine. And potential side effects include flushing and headache, generally as a result of the dilated blood vessels with the ankle swelling. The fast heart rate usually relates to the prescription of nifedipine and diltiazine. Nitrate. Nitrates are medications that are used also to treat angina and similarly they dilate or open the coronary arteries. The most common nitrate prescribed is glycerin trinitrate spray. This spray can be taken if somebody develops angina and it can be taken as in one spray under the tongue, followed by five minutes later a second spray. Nitrates are also prescribed in tablet form, known as Indure, or a, nitro, a trans, transiderm nitro patch. Potential side effects include headache and dizziness. We recommend that GTM spray is not kept on the person because the temperature in the body can alter the GTN liquid. Anticoagulants are used in the treatment of atrial fibrillation and also prevent stroke. And again, we commonly call these blood thinners. The most common anticoagulant was warfarin, but we now have newer oral anticoagulants such as Pradaxa, Zarelto, and Eliquis. If you're taking an anticoagulant, it is very important to report any unusual bleeding in the body. In particular, any head injury, it is necessary to seek medical advice. A short word about a pulse check. It is important that cardiac patients learn to check their pulse using two fingers placed on the wrist side of the pulse a slight bit of pressure, and you will feel a pulse underneath. This is something that needs to be practiced, and once practice will become quite easy to determine the pulse. You will feel that the beat of the pulse is regular. If you note that the beat is irregular, it is important to seek medical help. Non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. These medications such as Nurofen, Arcoxia, Naprazen, Diphene and Volterol are used for anti-inflammatory conditions such as arthritis or severe back pain or neck pain. They should be used with caution in cardiac patients and please ask your pharmacist if it's safe for you. 
also ask about the duration of taking these medications. It should be on a short term basis. Please also be aware of tablet combinations that contain paracetamol. That's the end of the presentation. Should you have any questions, please contact the Cardiac Rehab Department. 414-3097 is our telephone number. And if you're in the actual Cardiac Rehab Programme, you can speak to any of the nursing staff regarding your queries. Thank you very much for participating in this slideshow.